Thank you very much, uh, Rod. Uh, the 600 publications are only 300, three and six different. So welcome, everybody. Uh, I have the pleasure today and the honor to be speaking to you uh, with the help of my colleague, uh, Dr. Abdul Rashid Aziz from uh, Singapore. We have set these uh, slides for you. And uh, of course, we're going to speak about Ramadan, intermittent fasting, footballers, if this is of interest for you. Of course, we have no conflict of interest because we, got, we will not be selling you food. We're going to tell you, stop eating food. <laughs> And uh, you have seen on the email that uh, you have four uh, specific learning objectives. Uh, what is Ramadan? What is uh, effects of Ramadan on uh, football-related uh, measures, on football match measures, and eventually how to counsel and advise uh, football players. So I will ask you to raise your hand. Who would be interested in knowing at least some of the information on, on one of these points? Please raise your hand. Thank you very much. So for the few ones who did not raise their hands, you can have a nap. And I uh, promise you that uh, I will be waking you up before 9 o'clock. OK. So uh, as you know, Aspetar is a center of uh, FIFA football, of uh, center of excellence. And uh, we care about football. We care about uh, medicine. So today, you're going to hear about uh, injuries, about uh, hydration, about nutrition, about uh, football. And what it comes to football, I would uh, strongly uh, advise you to read this, uh, this article that we have uh, written, uh, we have published 15 years ago, but we spent around two years writing this paper. And we don't regret having uh, written uh, this paper because it has been cited uh, more than 2,400 uh, times. So this, is, this is the most cited article in the field of sports medicine and sports science uh, ever on soccer. And uh, if you read this article, you will know more about the physiology of soccer, the uh, time motion analysis, how much a player does run, a sprint, etc. Training of football players, assessment of football players, male football players, female football players, referees. So this, uh, this article is not bad. I will invite you to read it. And when you read it, you will, uh, and you all know that football is a mix of endurance efforts, but also uh, explosive efforts like headers, like tackles. But most importantly, repeated effort, repeated street ability is a, a key also in uh, football performance. So uh, to better know football, I invite you to read uh, this article. But uh, when it comes to football, you need uh, substrates, you need to be hydrated. Uh, some fatigue might come uh, towards the end of, the, uh, of each half, and uh, you might get injured. And all these aspects could be impacted by Ramadan. What is Ramadan? Ramadan is the fifth pillar of Islam. And uh, in Islam, it is compulsory for every uh, healthy Muslim to be fasting for 29 to 30 days, depending on the year, uh, every year. But uh, Islam is also uh, the champion religion at the, uh, the level of fasting, because if you follow also the advices of the Sunnah, you'll be fasting two days a week, and also three consecutive days in the middle of the lunar month, so at full moon, Layl uh, white, white uh, white nights. And also some days, some specific days, just before Ramadan and just after Ramadan, this uh, to uh, ensure a, a smoother adaptation of what happens to the body when you completely uh, flip over the sleep-wake uh, cycle, when you completely stop eating and, and drinking, uh, etc. So we're going to have uh, more clues on this in, uh, in, uh, in a while. So if you are a Muslim and you would like to fast, as the religion says, you will be fasting 120 days a year. So one day each three days. And uh, if you know the uh, magic effects of uh, intermittent fasting or caloric restriction and the autophagy, the physiology of autophagy, then you will understand why it is so important to fast. So uh, it's a new lunar uh, cycle. It's not uh, based on the Gregorian uh, uh, calendar. So you will not be fasting at the same period of the year based on the Gregorian calendar. You will be fasting uh, every day, every year, 11, year, 11 days before. So out of the 33-year uh, cycle, you, again, you're going to be fasting in January and then in January, for, for instance. So around the clock of the uh, year calendar, but also around the clock of the daylight. Because depending on the, the lo your location and the time of the year, if it's winter, uh, winter or summer, you will be fasting at different hours. Not between sunrise and sunset, but between dawn and sun, uh, sunset. So. If you are in Qatar, not very far from the uh, equator, 
uh, you'll be fasting for 13 to 15 hour, hours every year. So it's pretty uh, steady, pretty easy. If you are uh, living in a, much farther from the equator, and you, if you're in the north of France, for example, or north or north of Iran, then it's uh, much different. In winter, easy. You will be fasting nine or even perhaps only 10 hours. So it's very easy. It's more challenging in the, in the summer. In the summer, you, you can fast as long as 18, 19 hours. And if you are living higher, Scandinavia or at these latitudes, you will be fasting for 19, perhaps 21 hours. This is much more challenging. So there is not one Ramadan. There are different Ramadans depending on the time of the year and the, the place where you are. Let alone the North Pole and the South Pole, where there are six months of day and light and six months of night. The, here, you have special religious rules that uh, guide this that are out of the scope of this uh, presentation. But if you want to discuss, I will be happy to do it with you. So let's uh, try to think about injuries. This uh, nice piece of paper in BJSM in 20, uh, 2002 by uh, Ranama and colleagues have shown that towards the end of each game, the last 15 minutes, you have more uh, number of ac actions with uh, moderate uh, injury potential and high injury potential. So if you are tired, in, in addition to this natural uh, increase in risk, then you have a problem of potential, uh, potentially have more injuries. When we speak about sleeping, not sleeping, we have this uh, pioneer paper from Luke and a colleague in 2011, in 2011, then showing that in young adolescents, if you sleep less than six hours, you have higher risk of getting injured the day after. This uh, paper has been uh, reinforced uh, three years later, showing that, as you see, if you sleep, uh, again, young adolescents, if you sleep uh, five, six, or uh, seven hours, you have higher risk, likelihood of getting injured than if you sleep seven, uh, sorry, eight or nine hours. So sleep is important for uh, preventing, uh, preventing injury. This is why uh, there are two, f so far, only two, that's sad, but only two papers uh, at the top, a paper uh, of an experiment done in Tunisia, and at the, at the bottom here, Aspeta staff, led by uh, Dr. Cristiano Irali and our champions of the NSMP. And I would like to commend the NSMP doctors and physios and nurses who are doing an excellent job uh, of getting uh, accurate data to uh, allow science to, uh, to evolve. And I'm so happy to see that now, in the recent years, uh, several NSMP doctors and physio have started uh, to publish. I'm so happy of this. So uh, at, the, at the top, uh, a Tunisian team followed for uh, two consecutive years. This paper showed uh, a significantly slight increase in the non-contact injuries. QSL data, no effect of Ramadan of, on injuries. One of the differences between these two papers is that uh, in Tunisia, players are training and uh, playing during the afternoon. And after afternoon, they are still fasting. Here in Qatar, uh, the, the players are fortunate. They train and play uh, at night. So they broke their fast, they are hydrated. It's uh, pretty easy. Perhaps this is one of the differences uh, that, um, that led to uh, this difference of results. So uh, today I will be showing you my colleagues. I'm so happy to be with them again. Uh, Anis Shawashi with this uh, review on, uh, on Ramadan, but it's pretty old, around 10 years ago. And uh, our friend from the Basque country, from Spain, uh, Inigo Mujica, we wrote uh, interesting papers. But these were not on footballers, because at that time there was not, there was not enough literature to specifically write on footballers. Now it's different. You're going to see this towards the end of the presentation. I'm happy also to introduce you Dr. Hamdi Shturu, who wrote uh, many articles on, on Ramadan fasting, but also on, on the blue there, the blue, a book freely available on uh, on internet, uh, Effects of Ramadan on, uh, Fasting on Health and Athletic Performance. You'll find a lot of chapters, including oral health uh, and, and Ramadan, etc. So very much interesting. But this specific paper done on uh, young under 19 uh, football players showed uh, that yeah, towards the end of Ramadan, uh, their physical uh, capacity was uh, really, really reduced. Lower yo-yo intermittent recovery test, so the yo-yo test is an intermittent test. Uh, lower repeat and speed ability test, but also lower wing gate uh, performance, but the wing gate is not relevant to football, but also increased fatigue uh, in these uh, young players. 
the literature is lacking studies on elite players. Uh, the two papers that I showed you on injuries are on elite players. These are one of the few uh, papers on elite players. So, let's move now, same team, uh, lead, led by uh, Asma Al-Alwi, but uh, specifically, the repeat and sprint ability that footballers use so much, and uh, time of day. So what about, what about the effect of Ramadan, or time of day on these uh, performances? In the morning, if you're fasting, you're good. You are, there's no effect. You see there, uh, the morning uh, measures are um, in gray, but in black you have the uh, afternoon measures. At the end of afternoon, you're impacted by Ramadan. Okay, so this was in Tunisia, and they were they were fasting for 16 hours and a half, and testing was uh, held just before breaking the fast. So we have tried to here in Aspeta, we have tried to know more about uh, this these effects of Ramadan intermittent fasting on repeat and spritz. So we used uh, uh, our treadmill, our champion treadmill. So this treadmill belongs to Aspetar, but it's based in the basement of uh, Aspire. Why? Because you need to be on the basement. This uh, treadmill is so sensitive that if you put it on the first floor, it will be uh, sensing the movements of the building. Yes, you are sitting in a place which moves. You don't feel it. This treadmill feels it. So uh, we have uh, set these repeat and speed ability tests. And uh, as you can see from t these two uh, figures, there was almost no effect on uh, three days of intermittent fasting, like in Laili B, in the middle of the lunar month, on repeat and speed ability. But we have a problem after the, uh, the rest. Between the two sets, there were three minutes of, of recovery. And after these three minutes of recovery, when the, pl the, the participants were in fasted state, they, they could not resume as they did in the fed state. And you see a lower uh, power in sprint six, and, and due to a lower uh, leg ve vertical stiffness in uh, sprint six and seven. There's something happening in the mind and or in the body of the fasters, and we don't know why their leg stiffness is lower after having uh, taken a risk. But after one or two sprints, they are on the, on the road again. So it's pretty much interesting. This, art the, this article was done uh, with a very intensive uh, protocol. And then we have uh, tried to see the effects of this uh, protocol on the, repeat, on the reaction times. Because you know, foot, uh, football and sport performance is not only about running, it's also about reacting. And uh, here I have the bad news. I have bad news for you. Uh, Ramadan, uh, three days of Ramadan uh, fasting are negatively impacting the reaction time, simple reaction time and multiple reaction time. And uh, as you can see, uh, Contrary to many studies who just take athletes and do reaction times uh, tests or do an effort and then take the athletes by the hand and move to another room and do reaction times uh, later, we did the reaction time just next to the, uh, to the treadmill. So they were really exhausted. And you can see clinically from the face of the, uh, the guy in red there, there was, and two of them had needed to, see, uh, to sit because they were almost uh, falling on the ground. So very intensive. Uh, uh, protocol, reaction time negatively impacted. So we have tried to uh, uh, inspire ourselves from this very nice study from uh, uh, Singapore and, um, and Malaysia. Because Dr. Shea Mohammed and uh, our colleague Abdul Rashid Aziz and their team did uh, find a way to counteract the negative effect of Ramadan fasting on long-term effort, efforts. And this, these measures was just uh, mouth rinsing. So if you mouth rinse with water, or with, uh, with uh, so what, placebo, uh, or with carbohydrate, then you counteract the fatigue that appears after a 10K uh, trial. So we thought, OK, let's try to use mouth rinsing to try to counteract the, the small decrease that we observed in repeat street uh, ability. So we had this uh, protocol done. Again, here, a second protocol using the same uh, effort. And uh, we did intensively mouth rinse uh, the players before the first set, in, be in between each sprint, etc. So they were intensively mouth rinsing with placebo or carbohydrate. And of course, there was a control uh, condition. 
And the bad news here is that if mouth rinsing helps for endurance effort here, it does not uh, bring any positive effects, not on physical performance and on reaction time. So if you want to, to improve yourself, mouth rinsing is not the solution here. And the other problem here is that from the religious perspective, if you mouth rinse, you have a risk of swallowing inadvertently some liquids. And here, it's a problem at the level of uh, the practice of religion. So if you are a Muslim uh, fasting during Ramadan and wanting to do uh, mouth rinsing, you have to uh, consult the scholars, religious scholars, and you have to know that uh, the percentage was really uh, low, but some uh, uh, participants did swallow some of the liquid inadvertently. It's normal. They were hyperventilating, exhausted. I have the pleasure to uh, introduce you uh, this guy. His name is uh, Abdul Rashid Abdulaziz Farouk. I, uh, these two guys are uh, turning me mad. There is Abdul uh, Aziz Farouk, we call Aziz, and there is the other guy from Singapore, Abdul Rashid Aziz. And it's been seven years, and, I'm, and I still don't know who is who. <laughs> this is why I have gray, gray hair, you know? And uh, you can see that on this uh, picture, uh, both Aziz and myself, it was uh, at the torch at the conference, both Aziz and myself did not have any white hair. And if you cross Aziz or myself in the corridor now, you can guess easily that this picture has been taken at least two or three hundred years ago. <laughs> Very interesting study here on elite football players. These players, 54 players, preparing to play the Olympic Games. The Olympic Games 2012, Ramadan in, in, in London. Uh, FIFA World Cup in Brazil, Ramadan. Last year's final of the UEFA Champions League, Ramadan. Next year, and so on, Ramadan in the QSL, and uh, from April, March. So if you're lucky to be alive for the next 20 years, you will have football and Ramadan. So we might uh, think about how to try to help our players to cope with this. And uh, here, we have a problem. We have a problem. So look at the, these questions. Uh, uh, randomly, I took some questions. Look at the answers of 54 elite football players who were preparing to play the Olympic Games. The question, Ramadan fasting will increase my physical skills. No, the first, sorry. Ramadan fasting can reduce my endurance stamina during the game. Agreed, 46. Strongly agreed, 35. So complexively, 82% are negative towards this. The second one, Ramadan fasting will increase my physical skills. 85% negative. Let's speak on the one. If I'm, poor, in, sorry, if I'm properly hydrated at Suhoor, I can participate in the game or training without any problem while fasting. Only 11% agree. Negative again, in their minds. Uh, Ramadan fasting will reduce my concentration during the game. 70% negative. Ramadan fasting can reduce my power during the game. 78% negative. <laughs> and these are only a few questions. Uh, I think it's okay to postpone Ramadan fasting until after the Olympics. 70% positive. And this postponing Ramadan fasting is uh, uh, religiously very strict. So here, they should consult uh, scholars. And uh, l the last one. My coach wants me not to fast during Ramadan. 54% uh, agreed. So uh, for those who are working with football, you know all the problems we have when uh, Ramadan comes, when we are in uh, a team where we have one or more Muslim players. If it's like in Qatar, in the Muslim majority country, it's easy. You train and play, in, uh, play at, at night, it's relatively OK. When you are in, uh, if you are in, uh, in Europe, in France, for example, at the Olympic Lyonnais, my uh, Alexandre Lel, our, our colleague, was fitness coach there for five years. They were training in the morning. So it's easy to be training in the morning when you fast straight. But the guys here of nutrition, medicine, with, uh, what about after training, spending 10 hours waiting for drinking and, uh, and eating? Question mark. Not easy. So we have a problem in the head of the players. And perhaps the problems in the head of the players is coming from, from us. We're going to discuss this a bit later on. Now let's come uh, to talk about the uh, actual effects of Ramadan fasting on football performance. And the bad news is that there is only one study 
on this, uh, done by the other Aziz, who is Abdul Rashid Aziz. This is the guy. And you saw the face of Aziz and this Aziz, and I still don't know who is who. It's, it's difficult. So this fantastic researcher and his team uh, did in Malaysia a very interesting uh, study on the effects of uh, Ramadan fasting on actual football performance. It was in Penang State and in under 23 uh, players. So these are not Champions League uh, players, uh, Champions League of Asia players. Okay, These are good players, let's say. Sub-elite, this is sure. Four of them were non-Muslims. This is the protocol you see here in blue, Ramadan. Interestingly, they did two games before Ramadan and two games uh, at the end of Ramadan. And the, the, the data I will show you are the average of the two games as control and the two games as Ramadan uh, conditions. Uh, the coach has tried to split the six and seven players in two equally strong teams. But uh, it resulted that the, the coach did a big mistake because if you see here the result, uh, Team A did beat Team B in all the four games. And uh, these are just glimpses of the results they have in this study. The study is full of very interesting uh, results. So uh, so this is to, to tell you that these, uh, the data is the average of two, uh, two games in each case. Here you have uh, the total distance covered by the players in the game, if it's relevant, uh, there was a significant effect, negative effect of Ramadan on the total, the total distance covered the first half, second half, and total match. But as you know, it was uh, the difference was of 13%. But you know, total distance does not mean anything. For example, if you attend in the uh, talks of uh, Professor Sebastian Racine here, you know that elite football players are very clever. When they uh, play in the heat, they are very clever. They keep their sprints, which are very close to performance, which help for performance, and they decrease the, the walking and the jogging. So th is difference coming from difference at the level of low intensity or high intensity efforts? I'm going to answer immediately. This is, uh, these are the results about the uh, distance run at low intensity, so everything under 8 kilometers per hour. And here you see that there is no difference. So they kept their walking, they kept their jogging the same. So the difference might be some, somewhere else. Uh, at the level of uh, distance covered at moderate intensity, you have no effect on first half. But second half, there's some fatigue coming. And of course, a significant re reduction of 22% uh, for the whole game. And most, is, uh, most importantly, now the tragedy. The tragedy comes with the distance run at high intensity, everything above 18 kilometers per hour. I'll leave you interpret this. The effect is there first half, the effect is uh, there second half, and the strong negative effect, 35%, is there for the whole game. Again, these are under 23 players from Penang. But again, this is the only study available so far. So this study showed that Ramadan fasting in these players and in hot and humid conditions, they were there some, somewhere in the 33 degrees, 70%, uh, negative, negative effect on the total distance, on the distance run at uh, moderate intensity, distance run at high intensity, no effect on the uh, low intensity distance. But you can argue me, oh, OK, during Ramadan, they didn't give it all. We saw that some players have uh, negative uh, attitudes. So they just uh, run slowly. They did not do any effort. So I'm going to um, challenge you by telling you that the bad news for you, if you thought this, is that the heart rate was not different. At the end of the game, the heart rate in Ramadan and uh, in the control were the same, and around 82% of heart rate max, which is in the norms of uh, playing football. If you play football, your match heart rate will be between 80 and 85% as a whole team. There are exceptions. The RPE also, the RPE, the rating of perceived exertion, which very recently in a very recent review published three or four weeks ago, has been uh, renamed the rating of perceived effort. A very interesting article. If you want, I can uh, send it to you. Uh, also in the norms. So the, the players were running. Lactate, 
in the norms of sub-elite players. So they did the effort, but they were not able to cope with the high intensity and moderate intensity uh, efforts, which is, a, which is a problem for us. Now I'm going to give you even more details on this study, thanks to uh, uh, <coughs> Rashid. Uh, these are the control, uh, this, the control condition distances split by 15 minutes. You see, first half, they start, uh, start str strongly, and they, their fatigue appears. This is normal physiology of soccer. After the half time, they are better, and then fatigue reappears. But at the end of the game, there is this end spurt of effort here. This is because of uh, psychologically, they know that uh, there's anticipation, and they know that they, the, the end of the game is, is, is close, so they can give it all for the end of the game. So this increase at the end of the game is a normal thing that we observe in uh, physiology of soccer. But if we have a look at the uh, results of the fasting conditions, then you see the red things are there when we have a significant difference. So the only time when they were not impacted by uh, their fasting, and their Ramadan fasting, almost one month, it was uh, in the middle of the game. They started poorly, and most importantly, the second half was a disaster. So 15%, 20%, 25% of difference, and you can hear no last spurt of effort at the end. Is it the fault of Ramadan, or is it your fault or my fault? We're going to discuss this a bit later on. So why uh, did we observe an, um, less effort at the uh, beginning of the game? It's possibly because of a nocebo effect. You are all in medicine, and you heard about the placebo effect, and you know that the opposite of placebo effect is nocebo. Nocebo is when you think that this pill or this procedure or this fact will be uh, negative or deleterious for you. So if you think right away that Ramadan is bad, how will you do the effort? How will you prepare to the game? You can't. But if you player, and usually players repeat what uh, we tell them, if you player think that Ramadan is bad, it's perhaps because of you or of me. And I will tell you it's my fault also. I will tell you a bit later on. So, uh, the poor, the poor pacing strategies could come from the effects of Ramadan or could come from, again, our fault. I have a question for you, and I'm, I'm sure nobody will uh, raise his hand. Okay? I challenge you. Whoever went to a coach and told him, listen, in two months there will be Ramadan. So please, we will be asking the Muslim players to fast once a week and train in a fasted state. And you, please, you will do three friendly games in the fasted state to prepare for Ramadan. Can you raise your hand? No. I can't raise my hand. Nobody did it, to my, to my knowledge. And I would, be, I would love to, to know anybody of you who would have done it. We don't do it. And then we say, ah, the players have a negative. We are not doing our job. So. I love these articles because this article has a very strong title. You read the, read the title, you don't need to re read the article. So poor intermittent spin performance in Ramadan fasted uh, Muslim football to footballers despite controlling for pre-exercise dietary intake, sleep, and training load. Training load is a problem also because us doctors or medical practitioners around the, the team when Ramadan comes, we start to say to the coach, oh, coach, coach, it's Ramadan, they will be fasting, da, 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 da. And the coach also uh, turns crazy with us and consciously, or unconsciously, decreases training load. So at the end of Ramadan, you have tr decreased training load and a negative effect. You don't know if it's the effect of Ramadan, if it's the effect of nocebo, and or if it is an effect of detraining. How can you detrain an athlete and ask him to be... Uh, uh, to be fit. Uh, Anish Shawashi, in his thesis, and I'm sorry this study was not done on footballers, but on early Judaists in Tunisia. Uh, the, the, one, one of them was the world champ at that time. Uh, they did an interesting study uh, following these Judaists before, during, and after Ramadan, and these Judaists 
kept their training load high. They were under very strict technical director and medical staff. Very good sleep, very good uh, hydration and uh, nutrition at night. Most of their performances, physical test, not judo, most of, the, of their performances were not impacted, including the UU intermittent recovery test that we saw in, in Shturo's study decreased in footballers. So also we have to think, what about detraining? And uh, is this detraining coming out only out of the coach? Or are we medical staffs, uh, do we have a role in this natural detraining that comes during Ramadan? Ramadan is all, you know, you know, socially people go out at night, they go prayer, they go see family. It's a special, and I love Ramadan, there's a peace in this month. It's a special month. So let's uh, festeggiare in Italiano, let's uh, celebrate. Okay? I have to think about it. This slide is from the thesis of uh, Abdul Rashid Aziz, uh, published in 2016. And these, these are all the potential effects of Ramadan on performance. You see at the top, food restriction, food restriction, change my eyes, sleep uh, restriction, uh, shift in the uh, wake uh, sleep cycle, training load issues, and nocebo effects. So if you want, of course, I, I will be happy to share these uh, slides with you. I'll share, of course, the articles and any discussion because we only are, have one hour today together. Uh, so the practical Im implications are that perhaps we should think about doing some rehearsal of Ramadan. And if you have, uh, if you have already, if you, have, if you are a doctor and if you want to, uh, to be nice with your patients, you should advise them to fast because fasting is very good for, for physical health and mental health. Through autophagy and other, other mechanisms, it is absolutely a gold. Fasting is a free hospital, as uh, Karim uh, Khaledi says. Okay, then you should perhaps try to help them cope with fasting and training. But for this, you have to be convinced yourself. I have also to be convinced with you. Because if you go and speak with the coach, if you're not convinced, the battle is lost. So if you are Muslim here and you know what is fasting, I don't have to push too much to uh, convince you. If you're not Muslims, I would uh, strongly advise you to try to fast some, sometimes uh, this year and try to read more about uh, intermittent fasting, caloric restriction, and the effects on, on health first, and then how to try to help our players uh, do better uh, in Ramadan. So uh, better, better prepared physiologically, better prepared psychologically. You can think about using uh, pre uh, pre uh, body cooling and or mouth rinsing with a question mark because there is no evidence that this works in football. We saw that mouth rinsing is working in 10K, so in endurance. It's not working in repeat and sprint. <coughs> Nobody tried it in a football game, mouth rinsing effects. Body cooling, what I know is that here, when you are uh, on the field, the players, fasting players, especially in the hot environment, when they are in the fasted state, they love mouth rinsing and cooling their heads and, and their bodies. They do it. So perhaps if they do it, there's a reason behind it. If there is no, ah, if there is no uh, evidence, it doesn't mean that it doesn't work. Evidence-based medicine. I, I repeat, if there is no evidence, it doesn't mean it doesn't work. The history of medicine is here to show you that. But of course, it's better if there is evidence, okay? But for now, we don't have evidence on this. And what about education? What about if, if we say to the, if you change the minds of the players and tell them Ramadan is good for health and you can cope uh, with uh, Ramadan uh, while you're training and playing? Perhaps this will bring uh, positive results. We don't know. Uh, the last study I would like to present before concluding is the study, is a study. It's not a, an original study. This is a, a letter to the editor written by uh, Christopher Carling and Julien Lugier on the third league French match last year in 2019 during Ramadan and they had uh, only four players fasting and these four players fasted only for the first half. Why? Because at, uh, at the half time it was... Uh, time for breaking the fast. So the players fasted for one half, broke their fast, and second, second half is not very interesting. And here, in these, 
in these very cold conditions, 13 degrees, uh, there was no effect of Ramadan on these four players' performance in the f first half compared to their pre-Ramadan uh, performances. So this shows that the literature is very poor when it, it comes to elite football players and, uh, and Ramadan, and we need to do much more research. And the good news is that Ramadan is coming now. It's entering into QSL, and we have uh, the cooperation with the, between Aspetar and Aspire with uh, Professor Walter Di Salvo uh, Center of Football Performance, and uh, we have the NSMP uh, department. So I think that uh, the future is very much promising with regard to QSL, Ramadan, injuries, and uh, physical performance. <coughs> to finish, I will uh, flag some of the papers. So uh, these were advices to the players. Advices to the players, how do you cope with uh, with Ramadan, but these were published out of a meeting here. It was in 2011, FIFA Aspeta meeting Ramadan football. Many doctors and, and physios were here at that time. I was here as a, as a guest, and we published this with Anis Shawashi and Don Kirkendall from uh, America. And now, let's come to 2019, two reviews. This is the review from uh, Faris and colleagues about the effects of Ramadan on sleep in everybody. In, uh, the whole population, and this is a specific uh, review in BJSM by uh, Khaled Trabelsi and colleagues of the, the team from Tunisia about the effects of Ramadan fasting on, on the sleep of athletes. Here is the uh, systematic reviews on uh, the effects of Ramadan on uh, performance, physical performance. 2019, Abaydia and colleagues, sports medicine, and Sturu and colleagues, La Tunisie Medicale, which is on PubMed. Uh, and this is a bit more on football players. And I will finish uh, my last slide by trying to promote a bit this paper that you could also read. If you want, I can send it to you. Uh, in the same uh, special issue of La Tunisie Medicale, this uh, special issue on Ramadan, just published uh, one and a half months ago. And uh, this is optimizing training and competition during a month of uh, Ramadan. Recommendations for a holistic and personalized approach for the fasting athletes. And I uh, thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>